Hello folks, this is Jamil Surfer Gunstock Reviews from here in Phoenix, Arizona at the world headquarters of Enlo Custom Guns. How are you doing, Marty? Good, good. That makes me laugh, what mm. Dave was saying before. Mm. But, <laughs> okay, uh, before we start on this project, I'd like to ask you to please like this video, share this video, and subscribe to the channel so we can continue to bring you the content that you guys like. Marty, you just installed the uh, Ultimac, Ultimac mm -hmm. rail here. And we have another project just to keep this uh, project going. Mm -hmm. We have the Midwest Industries uh, muzzle brake. Okay. Um, there's a couple of things that we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. Is this thing here is loose? You know, if you touch it, you know, you can actually see how loosey goosey that thing mm -hmm. is. And that's that's a Soviet uh, way of putting mm -hmm. things together. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I mean, uh, the gun was never truly designed for accuracy. No. Yeah. I mean, have you seen that video on YouTube of this Russian schoolgirl taking apart an AK in school? <laughs> you know, it's, it's amazing. You see this girl in school in her school uniform and she takes an AK bup, 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 and even takes the muzzle brake off hmm. and then puts it back on again and assembles the thing. And it was like, we should teach that in schools in the US, okay? That's important. So, Marty, let's go ahead. It's going to be a really simple project, mm -hmm. but we're going to discuss a couple of nuances. About the muzzle brakes, yeah? About the muzzle yeah. brakes. But before I give it to you, of mm -hmm. course, clear, yeah. clear. There you go, buddy. Okay. Let's do it. We were talking a little bit, or at least you wanted me to go over a little, some of the little nuances of uh, muzzle brakes here. And, uh, you know, first we could talk about the AK muzzle brake. And, I mean, there, there's, there's kind of some strange aspects to the, I mean, if you could call this a muzzle brake. Um, this, is, this is basically uh, designed to prevent muzzle rise. And it kind of does an okay job, but it basically just has a little gas pocket here that, that, that kind of vents gas this way, or at least kind of prevents it. And the reason why is because the gun actually, under full auto fire, would actually come off in this direction, right? Under full auto fire, the gun the gun would just kind of naturally break high high right, right? And I know you can't see this at this angle, but basically this is the angle that the gun was going at, and this was designed to slow it from doing so, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't prevent it, it just design, it's designed to slow it from doing so. Um, and uh, there was, you know, I, I don't know how much truth there is to this, I mean, but the, the, the at least the rumor is, is that, uh, you know, and it, it's probably true, but, uh, that uh, the Soviets would actually sight them in uh, purposely uh, sight it off to the side because they knew the gun was going to sweep one direction, and the reason why was because uh, they would do they would fire in full auto. Mm. Um, they were try they were trained to fire in burst, right? And uh, you know the idea was that okay they would aim, fire a burst, and it would strafe wherever they were aiming for. Well, nowadays we sight things in you know, at least at least here, right? Um, and more than likely, I, I think you guys decided this in. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, then you have this muzzle brake. This muzzle brake is designed for recoil. This mm -hmm. muzzle brake is designed to, you know, basically soak up every last ounce of the gun going backwards, right? Uh, and so when, when a bullet's being fired, right, when a bullet's being fired, the gun goes backwards, the bullet goes forward, right? Um, and they do it. They do so in the same in the same time span. The, the the gun is physically traveling backwards while the bullet is still in, in place. The muzzle brake captures the gas and simply slows down that 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 uh, that rearward motion, or at least kind of counteracts it as soon as the gas starts to hit these. And uh, so that that the gas kind of hits the first uh, the first baffle here, and even into the second one. Um, it gives you a tremendous uh, kind of whoosh of uh, of. Uh, Gas is going out to the sides, and that's one of the reasons why these are really good at cutting down on uh, on uh, recoil. Um, but the, their downside is, I guess, is you have a, a large flash signature, which I mean, obviously, this would have a, a big flash signature too. And I mean, you know, the, the, that's uh, that's that's really the only downside. Uh, of course, uh, shooting w this with uh, somebody next to you, I'm sure the person next to you isn't very pleased. Well, Dave, uh, with a camera uh -huh. at 90 degrees from me uh -huh. at the range, does not like it no, at all. No, muzzle, muzzle brakes, uh, muzzle brakes can, uh, can be a nuisance, especially when you're at like a, a covered uh, shooting range. Yeah. Um, you know, but it, like I say, they, they, are, they are handy. Uh, they do increase volume to the shooter, but I mean, it doesn't really necessarily change the decibel level coming from the muzzle. So yeah. those are some of the nuances based on this. And then of course, uh, the AK muzzle brake is really easy to to take off, right? We sent, there's just a plunger here, right? And so with that plunger, you just end up just, oh wait, they're left hand thread. This is left yeah, hand thread. left hand thread. And so you just end up unscrewing it, right? And uh, 
that's that. And this one, obviously left hand thread. And uh, you were kind of mentioning uh, some, some aspects about this, but uh, you'll notice it says made in the USA, and it also says uh, Midwest Industries, or MI, right, it's their logo. Um, but generally speaking, you can, you can time this, and you can see that there's some, there's some detents here, like what an AK would have, right? And you're, you're kind of basing that timing off of, off of where that's at. Um, but there's not really a top or bottom. You have made or the USA. I mean, I guess technically you could run this thing sideways, I, although I don't know why you would want to. Um, but uh, for the most part, uh, you don't want, you want the flat on the bottom because if you were shooting uh, prone, you wouldn't have a dust signature. If you would do this up and down, uh, you, would have, you would just have the gas venting out to the sides. And especially if you're laying down on the ground, uh, you would just get a face full of dirt. Um, but you can see I'm just kind of holding my thumb here, right? And then uh, as it runs all the way back, I mean, we, we, can, we can see how it just kind of bottoms out here. Now, we could go even further. If you wanted to change the timing of this, like say, let's say, uh, and I think Neil was saying, that's as tight as humanly possible here as it's gonna go. It actually times up perfectly right then and there. Yeah. Now you could loosen that up, and, and what we were saying was is that uh, Midwest Industries is on the bottom, just the way this one times out, and then Made in the USA is on the top here. And this is perfectly symmetrical, so it wouldn't really matter if, it, if this were the bottom and this were the top, right? But let's say you wanted to change it, you would have to physically go in and, and machine something off. You would actually have to relieve some of this here, or in fact, you could just, in, in order to keep the same amount of tension that we have here, or, uh, what you could do is simply just back it off, right? You could back it off if you wanted to, but I don't, I don't know why you would want to. But oh, I mean, uh, me personally, I mm -hmm. don't care that the MIS on the bottom mm -hmm. and this on the top, mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter. Or can you, I mean, for other people who are more picky than I am, mm -hmm. could you sing like a little shim? Yeah, you could get a, uh, uh, you could get like a shim a, set. Uh, a shim set. Uh, you would have a little bit of trouble getting around this, so you'd probably have to cut the shim if you wanted yeah. to do that. But uh, you know you could you could do that. Uh, you could you could lock tight it on. Yeah, um, that's, you know, that's, that's another true. thing. Um, well, of course, that would make this a little difficult if you're trying to do this. But um, you know that's th those are all aspects of what you mm -hmm. could do with this. But uh, you know, as far as what we did here, this is perfectly reasonable. It'll stay on there. That's not backing off. You no, know. And, it won't and it's, back off. And it's got a, a decent amount of tension on there. And I mean, if it were, if it were, let's let's say it didn't, uh, let's say it uh, didn't, uh, let's say it didn't time up just right. And I mean, right now this thing is tight. But uh, let's say let's say it timed up to there. I mean, you you could in theory get a wrench on here and crank it just that extra little bit, which yeah. is actually kind of nice. And you can actually see these two flats right here. Um, I wouldn't like jam a stick in here because you actually could like. Uh, you, you actually, let's say you were to take a punch and do this, you could, you could damage the, the edges of this right here. Mm -hmm. And it's just unsightly. I know it's an AK, but you know, uh, you know I, as much as I say, don't be a pistol princess. I mean, you know, I don't want the guns damaged more, any more than the next guy does. But uh, you know, having said that, it's an AK, you know, beat it. don't be the guy damaging it when you're assembling it, be the guy damaging it when you're using it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. To, to run it out on the range, you had to do a three-gun competition. You had to throw it on the ground, get it muddy, whatever. You know that's fine. But uh, you know if you're going to do if you're going to do these things properly, uh, you know make sure you're using the correct tool. But uh, no, that's it. And uh, th those are some of the subtle little nuances there. Thank you, sir. This is great, Marty. And yes, I don't care that the MI is on the bottom. It just mm -hmm. doesn't really care. The one who's going to care is Dave when we go to the indoor range and, sh and test fire this and all this gas goes his way. Sorry, Dave. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so this is great. Uh, this project is almost done. We're going to do some more changes on the color of the stock. Mm. And the pistol grip, we have that K2 um, AK pistol grip okay. that we'll put that in. But we'll, when we get the furniture, we'll go ahead and do everything at the same time because there's a couple of nuances on how the AK Magpul stock goes in. Mm -hmm. There's a little wedge that goes in there, and it's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. So, by the way, Marty, we're gonna talk about stocks here. We'll talk about that in the next video. But, guys, thanks for watching. Please remain healthy, stay safe, and definitely have fun at the range. Thank you for watching Gunstock Reviews. Please visit our website at www.gunstockreviews.com for more exclusive content. Please visit our patron page at www.patreon.com slash gunstockreviews. Your contributions would be greatly appreciated and help us grow our selections and frequency of videos.